global. So we're not just connecting with each other, you know, at a small level where it's global, which is even cooler that I can connect with some, like right now, I'm, you know, the fact that I'm completely connected with someone in Australia with the Imperfectly Perfect campaign and he's over there in Australia. Yeah, tell me more about that. That's brilliant. It's just really cool to see so many people, especially public figures and celebrities, because let's be honest, most people think that they have the perfect life and that everything's great because they are famous and Mm -hmm. they're all speaking out being like, no, I've struggled with anxiety, depression, you know, all that stuff. Um, So it's really good that they are getting on board. But obviously I told, you know, I, I did, was very open with Glenn about it too, where, you know, at some point you have to open it up to other people. You can't have it just be celebrity based because then what happens is people who are already suffering, who already feel outcasted are going to feel even more so because they think, okay, well, here we go once again, because they're celebrities, they get to have a voice. Right. And I think it's really important that we all get to have a voice because we all have suffered in some way. I honestly believe every single human being on this planet has suffered from some kind of form of anxiety or some kind of, you know, fear. Um, yeah. So uh, we all have that common thread too. So, but yeah, I mean, you can follow, I can, I'll do a connection with you two, like a little yeah. interruption as well, but he's great. Um, and yeah, that's, that's another thing too, is that I want to be a, I do want to be a big voice for mental health awareness, being that I've suffered through it and I have, you know, family members and I mean, we've all been affected by it in one way or the right. other too. Right. So I definitely um, want to use my platform to educate and to let people know that, Hey, it's okay. It shouldn't be a stigma. You shouldn't yeah. have, you know, be scared to talk about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm, a part of the, the campaign. No, that's really good. I mean, yeah. you, I, I've i noticed over the past probably like three years, like not very long, but the past probably like three years or so, I've noticed that it has become more and more acceptable to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And I think it is because of people stepping up like this and saying, no, we are going to talk about it. And we are going to show that people everyone is going through this. It doesn't matter what walk of life you're in. Everybody is touched by this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, you know, I, I struggle too. I mean, I've got major anxiety. Um, You know, I've, I've dealt with PTSD for most of my, most of my life. Um, And there's a lot that goes along with that. So, you know, just being able to talk about it and say, no, like you can, you can talk about it and talking about it does not make you weak. It does not make you, it doesn't label you as a failure. And the more you talk about it and the more you work through it and the more that you accept it, then you can actually turn it around and use it as a tool to be successful. Yes. And how I try to use it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because even from a, you know, just relatability standpoint, you know, when you can connect with somebody by it goes back to what we were saying, just being vulnerable and being who you are and saying, no, this is what I do, but I'm not a victim to it. Yeah. See, that's the thing is like just not being a victim to it, you know, cause unfortunately I know en- enough people that they do fall a victim to it. And it's like the same narrative over and over again. And it's like, at some point you have to just learn to kind of deal with it, move on. And, you know, and, and, I mean, I, it's just, I know it's easier said than done, believe me, because I have, you know, family members that really struggle with Mm -hmm. that. And as much as you want to tell them like, Hey, I was able to move forward and I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. It's still hard for people when they're in that place to see that I I do feel for them. Um, So yeah, that's, I think where it is really difficult too, where too many people fall victim to it. Well, and it's, it's hard because no one can do it for you. Exactly. And so at some, and some level, you have to have that inside you to be able to tap into your own strength. You have to be able to tap into your own faith and hope in yourself. And, you know, for me personally, if it weren't for my, you know, relationship with, with God, I wouldn't have been able to get through it or get to where I am today. And, you know, I see that as kind of a common thread is that there's some kind of spiritual belief in the people that can take these hardships 
and still become successful and use those like use those experiences to grow and um and you you have to have some kind of greater power to tap into you know some kind of spiritual something some kind of strength that is not you because nobody can say hey i'm your mother i love you and this is what you're going to do hey i'm your best friend and i'm gonna like you can walk alongside them but you can't make that decision for them oh yeah so you've got to be able to tap into something it's tough though it is tough tough. believe me i mean i know for a fact that you know just being that i have suffered from severe depression and i have attempted to take my life like so i've been there done that and you know but now that i have kids like i would that's like my greater purpose is i have my children and i want them to always have a mother and i always and i want to help other folks but unfortunately you know there's still people that you have kids and still are in, getting in such a dark place that they don't even think about well i'm going to be leaving right. my kids without you know a parent so yeah there's there's obviously so much that goes into it but if we can at least talk about it right and not let have people feel ashamed about it, then hopefully more people will get help. Cause I think a lot of times too, a lot of people just don't cause they're afraid to, to admit maybe that they feel a certain way cause they feel that shame. So or they can't I, afford it. Or they can't afford it too. So that's another thing too, that we're, I know Glenn, he's trying to, there's a lot that he's trying to do to, um, to help folks, but yeah, it's not as simple as just being like, Hey, yeah. go see a shrink, you know, or, yeah, like with what money? That's why I'm depressed. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. In well, and I think there's yeah. there's people too that like, you know, I, I can relate to you in the fact of like, yeah, when I am in, there have been multiple times and, you know, my daughter's five now, but I mean, there have been multiple times over the past five years where I am in such a dark place. I am in such a low place that literally the only thing I can hold on to is I can't do that to her. I can't do that to her. Yeah. And you know, yes, that is a huge gift, but at the same time, there are people that go through the same kind of lows and the same kind of darkness that they are so caught up in that darkness that they believe the lies that their kids would be better off if they weren't there. Well, and that's how Glenn started the campaign is he had a good friend of his take his life and left behind his two-year-old son. And so that's when he was like, oh my goodness, you know, and, and of course, everyone thought he was fine because he was right. putting it out there on social yeah, media that everything was great. So obviously yeah. he felt shame and didn't want to talk about it and didn't feel like yeah. he could talk to anybody and, and, and share how, you know, deeply he was hurting. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot there, but once again, if we just can have those conversations. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. and opening, opening the, the opportunity for people to speak up. Cause I think the people that don't speak up, the people that do hide behind those, you know, perfect Instagrams and stuff like that. Those are usually the people that are hurting the most. The most. Yeah. And how do you learning how to start conversations with these people with tact and with poise in a way that you can say, Hey, like, I know that's crap. <laughs> right. Without, without calling them like fake, you know, yeah. but how do you start those conversations with people and say, you know, you can talk if that's not true. Right? Yeah. Well, and that's, that's, you know, that's, yeah. Touchy. that's hard. Yeah. But I feel like if more and more people that maybe have a, you know, public presence or are time at it, then maybe who's to say that one of the people is, you know, like they're a fan of that person as a celebrity or a public figure. Right. And then they see opening up, then mm-hmm. who's to say that maybe that will help them realize like, okay, if this person that I look up to and I thought was perfect is not and is sharing their story, then maybe I should be okay, you know, sharing mine. So I think that's essentially what Glenn is trying to, to do by having such public figures right. talk about it, that hoping that just that everyday person might be like, you know what, if they can do it and do it in such a public way, then maybe I'm okay sharing my story. Right. Or at least asking for help or talking about it, you know? And then being, if you're not a public figure, if you're not, you know, a celebrity <laughs> like me, <laughs> like me too. <laughs> and, I mean, but just being, being that person and being open to be the person that the people around you can come talk to, because mm-hmm. yes, those celebrities have the role to step up and say, I'm going to set the stage here. 
I'm going to set the stage that this is acceptable. And if you follow me, if you're a fan of me, if you look up to me, I'm showing you that you can do this now. Right. But then it's our responsibility as someone who maybe isn't in that role mm -hmm. to be the supporters and to be the ones that are open because yeah, your, your friend may look up to, you know, seal, <laughs> right. And somebody may go out and inspire them to share, but they can't go talk to that person. Right, exactly. You have to be the person they come to talk to. So how are you setting the stage in your community, in your network, in your friendships to be that person that they can go to and they can talk to? You have to be vulnerable yourself. You exactly. have to be open yourself yeah. and you have to be that person that is showing compassion consistently so that they feel comfortable to talk to you. Yeah. And luckily I've had to have people, you know, reach out to me and open up and I've had conversations with people and which is great, you know, cause yeah, that's, that's why I do it. I'm doing it. To yeah. help I'm not doing it. It's so, I mean, why else? What, I mean, doesn't <laughs> help me by telling people unless it's going to help others. Exactly. You know, so yeah, so I love it when people do reach out to me. And I say that all the time, like, feel free to reach out. Like, really, I, I mean, I'll yeah. respond. Believe me, I will. Yeah.